these proteins are given a name of regulatory proteins, a great name because that's their function. How do they work? And it's so simple, it works like this. Imagine my arm as DNA. Well, let's imagine my bare arm as DNA. And I write a genetic code. Let's say I write the code for blue eyes on my arm, the genes that make the, the code for blue eyes. And I say, okay, what does this DNA look like when I put it back in the nucleus? And the answer is it looks like this. Can you read the genes or not? What do you have to do to read the genes? Say it. Take the sleeve off. Then you can read the gene because the code is written on the arm. So what's the sleeve? The sleeve is the protein. Well, how does a protein come on and off? And the answer is this. Here's a protein that is covering my DNA, and I change the signal by removing a signal or adding a signal. And what does a protein do? Change its shape, and when it changes its shape, it pulls away from the DNA. And the moment it pulls away from the DNA, I have bare DNA. Now I can read it. So the question is this. In order to read the genes of the cell, then what I have to do is affect the protein. So let's look at the flow chart now. Here's the current version of the flow chart. Remember before it was DNA, RNA, and protein, the conventional one that's in all the textbooks? And the answer is, well, that's incorrect. It's totally incorrect. For the answer is, the DNA is covered by regulatory proteins. And to, to get the regulatory proteins off, the sleeve off so I can read the gene, I need an environmental signal. So the bottom line is this. You're not controlled by DNA. You're controlled by environmental signals. And this is what Niehaut writes in his paper. Just reading the yellow lines is the answer. You are not controlled by genes before it's a signal from its environment that activates the expression of the gene. So all of a sudden it says, wait a minute, then I'm not, I'm not genetically determined? No, you're environmentally determined. And all of a sudden, so what's, you know, we have to talk about how does that happen? Let me explain the mechanism. First of all, what is the environment? Well, the environment, there are two environments that affect all of us. There's an internal environment under your skin, the environment of your physiology, your blood composition, the temperature of your body, the amount of sugar in your body, the amount of nutrients available, the information. This is the environment on the inside. Yet, what is the other environment? The environment on the outside controls us. Why? Because when we live in that environment, we have to adjust ourselves to what's ever happening. And to adjust ourselves, then we change our genes to adjust to the environmental signals because the environmental signals elicit the gene action. So the question is, so where's the brain of the cell? And the answer is, the brain of the cell is the membrane. It is the skin of the cell. What about our belief that the, the brain of the cell was the nucleus? And the answer is this. Science is a male-dominated profession. And since males think with this, they made the brain of the cell. But the bottom line, I'll tell you what the nucleus is. The nucleus is the gonad of the cell. Why? What is the function of the nucleus? To make the programs and blueprints to replace the parts. So when I need new parts, I go to the gonad to give me reproduction. So the nucleus is for reproduction, it's not for brain. The brain of the cell is the membrane, and I don't have a lot of time to go into exactly why, but you have to understand that the membrane is the most primitive structure in biology. The most primitive organisms have just a single membrane. They don't have anything else in that, and that all their functions come from the membrane. So if we understand the membrane, we can then understand how it works. So let me illustrate, for example, how it works. Here are cells on the surface of a culture dish, and if I look at the membrane and I cut into the surface of the cell, this is what we see. That the surface of the cell looks like this layered structure right here that separates the outside environment from the inside environment. The yellow in the middle is like oil. And as a result, the membrane is a barrier that separates the outside from the inside because water can't go through the middle of the membrane and carry information across. So the self on the inside, under the membrane, is separated from the environment on the outside. But this wouldn't do any functions. This is just protection. To do function, I need the protein that does movement. Proteins do the movement. Proteins do the function. So like I showed you in my poppet bead version of the proteins, that these poppet beads insert themselves into that membrane structure that I showed you. And so the proteins stick inside the membrane. There are two classes of proteins in the membrane. They're very important. One set is called receptors. What's the receptor? Do you have receptors? Of course you do. What Name some. Skin, what, name some other ones that people are pretty obvious about. Eyes, ears, nose, taste, touch. Where are all the receptors located? In your skin. And the same with the cell. But in the cell, they're not organized into these structures that we see, but the proteins have antennas on them. 
And each different thing the cell can see has a different protein with a different antenna. So for insulin, I have a receptor that sees insulin. For glucose, I have a receptor that sees glucose. For light, I have a receptor that responds to photons of light. So for everything the cell can see, there's a special receptor inside the cell. And then the receptor is for what? Taking signals in. That's what receptors do. I see through my receptors. But now when the signals come in, I have to make a behavior to respond to the signal. That's the other set of proteins. The example that I'm going to use from the other set is called a channel. A channel means a canal. And the point about it is, in the resting state, the channel is closed. Nothing can go through the channel. But in an activated state, the channel opens up and there's a tunnel that goes from one side of the membrane to the other. Let me explain how they work. This is an example of the, uh, of the receptor. Let's explain how it works. The receptor sits in the membrane, has an antenna sticking up, and look at the bottom. Watch what happens when a signal comes in. The signal, remember, the environmental signals cause a confirmation change. So look at the shape. So if I'm inside the cell, I know if the signal is there because I can look at it. But when the signal goes away, then the confirmation goes back. So remember, I showed you this. Confirmation one, confirmation two. What was the difference between one and two? The signal. So when a signal comes in, the antenna receptor changes its structure. Now the other proteins, the channel looks like this. When we <clears throat> look at the channels inside the membrane, they too float around inside the membrane, but a channel is different because a channel is closed. And uh, we said the channel works when it opens up. So when a signal comes in, it opens up, and then information or molecules can shoot down the tunnel, down into the cell. And they can only do it when it opens and closes. But look, the wrong size signals don't go in, so the channels regulate which things can get in by opening and closing. So what we looked at is this. We saw signals come into antennas and change the structure of the receptor. And we saw that the output device, in this case a channel, can open or close when the signal comes in. Now let's put them together and see what, they, what happens when they come together. And the answer is this. The antenna on the left is going to scan the environment. Notice the shape of the protein inside the cell. It's a smooth tube. This is a connector called the G protein. Look at its shape. Can it plug onto that? Yes or no? No, look at the shape, it won't fit. So that when no signal is there, that connector doesn't connect. But when a signal shows in, it changes the shape, connects this one to this one, changes this one, and this makes a signal. So I have an environmental signal coming in the antenna, and then the channel on the right converts that signal into behavior. Do you understand? It's a switch. So let's, just do, let's see if I can do this one again. If I can uh, show it to you again, um, it works like this. Again, watch this. This is what controls biology. Antennas receive the signal from the environment, and when a signal is received, it changes the shape of the protein and allows the connecting device to connect the receptor to the output. The output is the channel. The channel creates a signal that enters into the cell, and that signal that now is going to go enter into the cell activates the functions of the cell. It causes the cell to move. It causes the cell to digest things. It causes the cell to change its uh, structure or behavior. So the fact is what? This is a, a signaling device.